In the downhole world, our products relate to technology, advanced technology. The deeper you go, the hotter it is. The more challenging it is for these materials to perform. People are coming to us for solutions. People need definitive answers on how we can make a material perform unlike it's ever performed before. We have provided solutions where others could not be found. It is a challenging environment to say the least. We want to be the best. We have an incredible team, a staff of people that contribute on all levels. They want to succeed and that is what makes me more proud than anything else. These people make all the difference in the world. We have taken on challenges when this first started out. It has to be a high quality product but done at a reasonable price. You can put the items down hole and they'll withstand the temperature and pressure and we know that it's going to be good every part from the first one to the thousands part. We still to this day haven't missed a delivery and have not suffered in any way with our quality of our product. The evidence is, is they're getting gas out of the ground. We start with maybe some drawings, some sketches, some dimensions, uh, an idea of how we want it to work. The input comes from a number of different sources, but in, in the end, I've got to compile it all and make it all work. When we have a finished product, we, we all go over it again. Then the testing phase begins. We can replicate the environment, the downhole environment here in our lab. We can apply heat, we can apply pressure, we can apply all this, this same environment that they're going to find down hole and so we know what's going to happen. In the end we're, we're very confident in what we do. Determining the future of a part or how it's going to behave is a difficult thing so you have to use the science and that's where the statistics comes from. We have tools that we internally develop. We make a decision that determines if this product will perform in those very difficult downhole environment, which is 13 to 15 to 18,000 psi and 300 to 500 Fahrenheit and all kind of chemical attacks and reactions. I like the challenge. I like the risk, I like the challenge. And it's incredibly pleasuring that you know that product worked in those nasty, difficult, hot in that environment. And we can predict that before it goes there. That's what we really do. A lot of our uh, tools and, and development that we do here revolve around our customers' products and their demands, and we build sophisticated tooling to meet those demands. I take their ideas and their engineering data and prints and turn it into a reality, a part that you can hold, touch, feel. I know the importance and the value of tight tolerance and I strive to make that the quality of our product. We do everything in house. We've brought everything home. Just a barrage of ammunition that we put into every composite matrix material that we assemble. Every one's unique um, from the fibers to the coupling agents to the interface to the resins. Once we develop a product for you, you will get the same product time and time again. And I don't think there's anything that we haven't overcome yet. So it's pretty intense here at Tech. My sweet spot in the company is on-time deliveries and zero defects. It's very imperative that we get them their product on time or a little early if we can. They're out on the rigs and they're, they're expecting to have parts delivered to them uh, so that they can run. If we do, they don't have our product, they can't, they can't drill. We know we're shipping quality because we have no escapes. We have had no black marks that have come back to us. Uh, our product is exemplary out in the field. Every different customer that we have has their own set of procedures and controls that we have to make sure we fall in compliance with. Every part has its own challenge because every part's different. One of my jobs is to make sure that its fit, form, and function is correct so when it goes out and enters the supply chain that it doesn't hold up the supply chain. When we're visited by our customers, they're normally very surprised by the lengths that we do go to ensure that our parts are correct and meet what they require. 
I see a lot of ideas. I see things on sketches on napkins. I see things that are, wouldn't it be great if? There's a lot of solutions on paper. The real technology strength of Tech USA is to be able to understand the customer's problem and develop a solution that is production oriented, that is capable of actually functioning and solving that problem in the real world. These very smart people come up with ideas and solutions. That's intellectual capital. And I'm able to identify it, preserve it, protect it, and make it an asset, turn it in uh, from a functional asset to a real asset that benefits not only this company, but also their customers. We know that our products have accomplished the mission. We have patented technology that gives us that added edge. It's tested, it's engineered, and there is no questioning whether it's gonna perform under those circumstances. It will not leave our facility unless we know this. We're all gonna win at this game, and we believe we have the solutions that are gonna lead the charge. What's exciting right now about this country? The great thing about the oil and gas business specifically in, in this new shale technology is the entrepreneurialism. And through entrepreneurship and the spirit of it all, we just kept on driving forward to find exactly that next gold rush. Business prospects are improving in this county and oil and gas is, is kind of a lens that you can see it all through. Oil and gas company is at the top and the engineers that I supply, they take up this small space, but then you just go on down and the pyramid gets broader. There's a constant stream of innovation in our business. Shale was considered uh, not a reservoir rock, it was considered a source rock. The technology and the advancements of how they can extrapolate it more efficiently, more effectively, has just, it's just completely changed. The nanotechnology that we're using is the strongest material known. High temperature, high pressure, very corrosive environments, those are um, the next generation of products that we're creating. The level of safety consciousness uh, is, is really impressive. The technology is off the charts. An industry as large as oil and gas, all of the things that need to take place, there are markets within markets that are very sizable. Companies that didn't exist uh, three years ago are now coming up with new ways to service this industry. These companies come to town really not knowing anybody and needing to get going really quickly. We are now trying to figure out here internally, how can we make it better, cleaner? How can we get it faster, cheaper? As soon as you get comfortable, uh, I think you're already falling behind. So we're already looking for what's next, what's after the shale play and oil and gas business. We're gonna see a lot of wealth generated in the state, and that's, that is certainly gonna trickle down again in, in, into the economy. It's not gonna be a trickle, it's gonna be a waterfall. The reach of this, the, the shale play is gonna go far beyond that of just uh, digging it out of the ground. That's all positive economic development, and, uh, and uh, we desperately need jobs in this area, and these are good jobs. The shale industry has given more opportunities to more people faster than any other industry that I've seen in recent years. This industry can be purposeful for the future, the next hundred years of this country, and the greatness that it brings. It gives the promise of creating products and solutions that were never before possible. We're talking about, uh, you know, somewhere in the range of 40 to 70 years of continuous drilling and production operations as we develop the play. There is such opportunity. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And it's right here, right now. We keep saying oil and gas, but it's really all about energy. And energy creates energy, as we all know. Here in the U.S., we are so blessed with natural gas and the liquids that we're getting out of the natural gas, that it is gonna make us energy independent. We're, we're gonna be in great shape. We're gonna change lives. We're gonna make lives better. It's energy independence. It's gonna be big. It is the next gold rush, and it's coming.